Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm going to show you how to find and fix an air leak on a Hatsan AT44 series PCP air rifle. maintenance video today. Uh, you've probably guessed I've been having an issue with my Hatsan AT4410 so I thought I'd make a video showing you how to look for and fix an air leak. Uh, over the last two three months I found that this rifle has been slowly leaking air. Uh, I'd fill it up to 200 bar but then when I come back to it a couple of days later it had lost half the air or so. Now I didn't use the rifle that much during that time so I put off sorting it out but when I got it out the gun safe a couple of days ago it was completely empty. So I thought it was about time to fix it. Now before you do anything, you need to make sure that the gun is unloaded and safe, which I've already done. So the first thing you need to do then is to remove the air cylinder here. But before I can do that, I've got to remove the suppressor in order to allow the cylinder to slide out. With the suppressor off, I can twist the air cylinder remove that. And then that just slides out. And with the air cylinder removed I can actually put the rest of the gun out the way for a minute. So this is the air cylinder. Now I can handle this with ease, because as you can see from the pressure gauge, this is empty. Now if it still had air in it, I'd be a lot more careful with handling it to make sure I didn't knock the valve in the end here, which would release the high pressure air. Now first thing I'm going to do to try and find the air leak, is to get a balloon and put it over this end. Just going to do this carefully to make sure you don't split the balloon. Okay, with the balloon on that end like that, uh, I need to put some air in it. Now, when the cylinder is completely empty like this, it's better to fill it from a tank rather than the pump, as the valve that keeps the air in requires pressure to keep it closed. Now, a quick blast from a scuba tank gets an air, enough air in quickly, but when using a pump, it can be difficult to get enough air in quick enough to build the pressure to keep the valve closed. Uh, unfortunately though, I've only got a pump, so I'm just going to have to make do with that. As you saw there, I did manage to fill it okay with the pump. Now I've only done it to just below 50 bar, as that's all the air you really need to find the leak. I'm now going to put another balloon over this end and then I can play the waiting game. So it's pretty obvious to see which end is leaking. Um, now I'm pleased it's leaking at this end, um, obviously not as pleased as if it wasn't leaking at all, but this end where it fills is easier to uh, disassemble to fix than this end, and it also means that the leak isn't somewhere else like in the gun or something. Now there are other ways um, other than using balloons you can test for the air leak, uh, you can put the ends underwater to see if bubbles come up, um, and you may even be able to hear or feel the air coming out. Now I don't know how well you'll be able to hear it or not, but you can actually hear the air coming out of this end of the cylinder. 
Um, I could hear that coming out before I put the balloons on, uh, they're more for demonstration purposes and to make sure that it was only that end that was leaking. Now from what I've read on the internet this does seem to be a problem with these rifles, uh, they do seem to be prone to it, especially when filled from a pump rather than a tank as mine is, and problems that can cause this could be a damaged o-ring or something, or a little bit of dirt getting in which is compromising the airtight seal. But to find out for sure I'm going to have to take it apart and have a look. Uh, from this point in, if you're not sure what you're doing, or you're not confident in taking your gun apart, you shouldn't attempt it yourself. You should take it to a gunsmith to fix for you. Uh, and that is for safety reasons, as you're dealing with very high pressure air, but also because you don't want to cause any damage to your gun, or put it back together incorrectly. First thing you need to do is to get the rest of the air out of the cylinder. Mine's nearly all gone there. Um, and you could just wait for that all to leak out, but to speed things up for the video and to demonstrate how, I will release the air using the discharging cap that came with the rifle. Um, before you attach it, you need to make sure that this black screw is sticking out. Then you screw the cap tightly onto the end here, like so. Then you can very slowly turn this black screw using an allen key which in turn depresses the valve which releases the air out of this hole here. You need to turn this a little bit until you can hear, hear the air and feel it coming out. Now I can hear the air has stopped coming out and the pressure gauge says it's empty so I can remove this cap again and then if I press down this valve you can hear there's no more air coming out. Um, so with all the air out I can start to dismantle the cylinder. First of all you need to unscrew this black metal um, protecting cap from the end of the cylinder uh, around the gauge and then with that off you can remove this uh, protective cover for the filling port. Now this next thing you need to do is to remove this entire gauge assembly um, but that is uh, very tight and very difficult to unscrew so I'm going to have to move to the workshop to take that off. As I said the gauge and valve are very difficult to get off so what I had to do in the end was clamp the cylinder in the vise, as you can see here. And then I've got a strip of rubber on either side so that I don't damage the cylinder and that also adds some grip. Uh, I then had to put something through the hole here to give me some leverage to unscrew it. Now you need something like a metal rod or pole, um, which is close to the diameter of the hole and is smooth as something threaded will cause damage. Now I used a screwdriver, put it through the hole and then put force on it to lever it. Now I've also already done this off camera to get it started, so you can be struggling on camera. And then once it gets past a certain point, you can then finish it off by hand. So this is the entire gauge and valve assembly. Now as you can see there is an o-ring around the bottom here which contacts with the inside of the cylinder. Um, there's also another o-ring on the valve inside here. So to get to that you need to remove this plate on the back here. Now this just unscrews uh, but be careful though as it's under a small amount of pressure as there's a spring inside here. Um, you could just grasp the outside here with some pliers or some mole grips or something but I found the easiest way to do it was to get some needle nose pliers and put them in the holes here and then twist it. Now 
And then with that off, I can remove this spring and valve plunger bit from inside. And as you can see, you see there is the other O-ring I mentioned. So how this works is when you put your filling probe in here and to start to fill the gun, uh, the air pressure then pushes this uh, spring loaded plunger back against the plate there which then obviously breaks that seal and allows the air in and then when the air has stopped being forced in the air pressure, uh, pressure inside the cylinder then pushes this plunger back forwards uh, to create the seal again to keep the air in. Neither o-ring look particularly damaged that one maybe looks a tiny bit squashed uh, but I am going to replace them both just to make sure I have my replacement o-rings here now these are readily available um, online from a number of different retailers uh, some sell the o-rings individually and others sell a full seal kit to replace all the o-rings in the gun so I'm now just going to change those o-rings over and put the new ones on to get the old ones off I'm just going to use a small precision screwdriver to lever it up Then put the new one on. And the same with this one around the end of the plunger a bit. A bit more tricky to get off. There we go. Snap the new one on. As I mentioned earlier on, um, small amounts of dirt can get into these guns uh, when they're filled from a pump rather than the tank. I don't know how well you'll be able to see on camera there, but it does look like there is some grime inside there where the o-ring would sit, which could be preventing an airtight seal. So I'm just going to use an earbud to give that a quick clean inside there. You can see the dirt on the end. Okay, with that all cleared out and the O-rings replaced, I can start to reassemble it. So, put the plunger and the spring in there. And then push this back plate to compress the spring and screw that in. And give it a tighten with the pliers again. And then this can be screwed back into the cylinder. And I'm again going to use a screwdriver to give me some leverage to tighten it. Like so. I can then put these covers back on. Now, the air leak should be fixed, but I'm going to do my balloon test again just to make sure. It's now been five minutes and it doesn't look like any air has leaked, so that's a good sign. I'm now going to fill it back on the gun and fill it up to 200 bar and see if it keeps that pressure. So I changed those seals a couple of days ago now and I'm pleased to say that the air pressure is holding at 200 bar. So whilst I will keep an eye on it, it provisionally looks like I fixed the air leak. Now, I hope you found this video informative. Uh, if so, be sure to check out the other Air Armoury videos and subscribe to the channel. So thanks for watching, and until next time, keep your arms in the air.